Hello you guys, welcome back to yet again another week of workouts video. Woohoo! If you guys are new here, these week of workout videos are super in-depth, very comprehensive videos where I take you guys through every single one of my workouts throughout the whole week. I jam pack truly so much value in these videos for you guys. I am a personal trainer. I have been for the past like six or seven years. I don't know why I literally always forget when I became certified. It was either 2018 or 2019, but I've been training for seven years and I've just have learned a lot over the years and I have definitely a ton of experience under my belt. So with that being said, I take you guys how to do every single exercise as well in every single one of these workouts. I'm filming this intro after the fact, so like I've already gone through all of these workouts for the week and I'm honestly so stoked with how everything panned out. Like this was such a fun, active week and I can't wait to share it with you guys. I actually started filming this video on a Sunday, so I want to start from there to kind of give you guys an idea of what my workout split has been. So Sundays I've actually been going to yoga, which has been awesome for me. I really love to incorporate a lot of diversity into my training. That's when I feel my best. That's when I feel like I look like my best. That's when I feel like I train the best and I feel my most athletic. I just love it. So I love adding yoga in. So that's what I've been doing lately. I'll either do like yoga or Pilates and lately it's been yoga once a week. Monday is a leg day. Tuesday is upper body. Wednesday is like a low impact steady state cardio day. Thursday is leg day part two. I'm always hitting legs twice a week because I really want to grow, grow my booty. And then <laughs> Friday is a super fun day. It's like a functional full body training day where we're really stepping away from the heavy weights and the traditional weight training. We're doing more like functional based athletic type movements. And then Saturday, I was able to get out and go skiing. It was like a beautiful day. Obviously skiing does not happen every single week, but I do live in Utah and it's accessible to me. So sometimes I will go skiing and it just so happened that it fell in this week as well. I know that can seem like a lot to some, so I do not want this split to stress you out. I honestly just want this to bring you guys some inspiration, maybe new exercises, help you with form for certain exercises that you like to do, or maybe just pull out a couple of workouts from this video that you want to do on your own. I'm definitely a huge advocate for rest days. Really, I'm only actively weight training for three days out of the week. Wednesday, I would say is like a really low intense day as well as Sunday. And then Friday was more so kind of like an active recovery day. I wasn't like intentionally training, but I just like skiing and that just happens to be like an active hobby. I do not have any other cardio goals or step goals or anything like that at the moment. I really have not been walking often, honestly. I also just want to say I've been seeing really great results with this training style. You know when you like don't feel like you're making progress and then like one day it like all hits you and you're like, oh my gosh, is that is that what's going on? And I feel like that's what hit me the other day. I really have been seeing muscle growth, which has been my personal goal the past few months. Of course, you need proper nutrition to support whatever your fitness goals are. You can't just train a certain way and like expect to have all these results. So with that being said, this is a really great workout split if you are trying to get gain muscle or even if you are trying to lean out, it's really going to come down to how you're kind of manipulating your nutrition to support whatever goal you have. But that's all the housekeeping things that I have to say, I'm pretty sure, but I'm so excited to share these workouts with you guys. I really just am in love with how this video turned out. So without further ado, let's get into it. That was actually my first time. Just everyone ignore my hair. That was my first time I've ever done hot yoga. And especially I think it was perfect timing because I've been getting into the sauna the past couple of weeks. Like I've been decently consistent with it. That was like killing two birds with one stone. That was me doing the sauna and also getting yoga in. I was like, I feel like I was not appropriate. I wasn't unappropriately dressed, but like I wasn't really expecting to sweat like that freaking much. Like I was pouring and I didn't even have a towel with me. That was amazing. That felt so good. And I feel like I've never really done higher intense yoga. Like the music was upbeat and it was just more of like a, that's what it was called it was called like hot power yoga or something like that i just loved it and she's like all right go into your warrior now shoot up with your breath and like it was just like super more like energizing yoga and i loved it ah oh, that was so awesome i love that so much i feel so good okay now we're gonna cold plunge because this is really close to my gym and honestly the whole time when i was in there i was like i, I cannot wait to cold plunge because apparently the room got up to 107 degrees fahrenheit in there which is ha 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 Imagine how I'm gonna feel after the cold plunge. My skin feels like it's vibrating. <laughs> this morning was all about breath. 
I guess. I <laughs> like the past hour and a half I've been like <laughs> I'm getting the rush, the blood rush, like feeling everything come back. Oh my goodness, my skin is like bright, bright, bright red. But it feels so good. You guys, I don't know how to explain it. It's like so energizing. Except my body, I could feel like it like throbbing in there today. Hello you guys, happy Monday. Today we are hitting legs. I still have been chilling with my same kind of leg split where I just hit total legs twice a week. But I wanted to try this new OxyStride flavor because I've honestly got this a few weeks ago now and I still haven't tried it, but it's in my all time favorite greens flavor by EHP Lab, Strawberry Margarita. So I mixed it up in here and we're gonna do a taste test because I love doing these on camera. Mmm. It honestly doesn't taste as strong as the greens powder does, like, in regards to the flavor, but it's still super good. It kind of gives me, like, Starburst vibes. But I love taking this specifically on leg days when I just am wanting a boost or if I'm feeling kind of pretty slow or lethargic or whatnot and I just kind of need a little pick-me-up. I love using OxyShred for that reason. Or I also love the ready-to-drink cans. They have, like, little OxyShred carbonated cans. Those are so cute and they're also way convenient. And to be honest, I will keep an open one in the fridge and I'll, like, take a few sips throughout the day when I need, like, a little something-something. But this really helps me with my focus my energy my performance my mood it just really enhances my gym session so <laughs> it just really enhances my gym sessions all right let's go crush it you can come in all right so for my first exercise i'm going to do barbell back squats which not to fool anyone i honestly rarely squat if anything i'll do like a dumbbell variation or on the landmine bar so i feel like it's good it's good for me to do these every once in a while but so to go over form really quickly i'm basically going to be placing the bar right at the top of my trap so i'm not coming up here on my like spine you're going to come down and keep my feet about shoulder width apart i'm doing a very generic stance here i'm going to come down and press my weight so they're back more so on my heels i'm always trying to keep my knees tilted out throughout the whole duration of the movement i'm trying not to let them cave in and i'm coming down to at least my thighs are parallel with the ground and then i'm basically just going to be driving up through my heels right now I'm gonna shoot for a set of ten at this weight this might feels like it's in my esophagus Exercise number two. I figured why why not since we're here we might as well stay here So let's do barbell RDLs when it comes to form you guys know I love teaching this It's like my favorite exercise to explain so basically hip hinging movement So we're not just bending over we're pushing our hips backwards to get our torso to fold over So that's the biggest cue is the lighting okay or did it just get weird because I can move over You can also pretend like there's a board strapped to your back so that your core and your spine can stay nice and neutral We don't want any arching or curving We're basically going to take our barbell and keep it nice and close to our legs throughout the entirety of the movement This is really important to mitigate any back pain so you can pretend like you're shaving your legs or painting your legs with a paint roll my neck is always staying in line with my spine. I'm not looking up or curling under and I'm always driving up through my heels and I'm keeping a slight bend in my knee when I'm coming down. I'm not locking out. I'm keeping a nice bend and if I want it to be more glute bias, I'm going to create an even bigger bend in my knee to get a bigger stretch in our glutes. I am using wrist straps just to help me with my grip strength with the bar. I do have these linked on my Amazon, which is in the description box.
like hate that exercise, but love it at the same time. I feel like I'm gonna die every time. Exercise number three is going to be a kettlebell step up. I personally like using kettlebells just because, I don't know, for some reason I feel like it's easier to balance for some weird reason, like the way the weight is. I don't know, but I just prefer it. So for form here, I'm always trying to make things more glute biased because I'm always just trying to grow the booty. With that, I try to make my lunges become more glute biased to hit that glute more. So instead of keeping my knee very crowded up towards my toe, I basically shift my whole entire lunge motion or my step up back so that my knee is always staying stacked over my ankle and that my shin is always nice and vertical. So essentially with my kettlebell, I'm gonna hold it with my opposite hand of the opposite leg that I'm working with and I'm going to step up. I like to hold on to something just to help with balance sake. It's just for stability here. And then I'm pushing my hips back and sinking down into this lunge. And again, keeping that knee stacked over my ankle. We have a nice big glute stretch, driving up through my heels again and coming up. And it's also important that you're not shooting up through this back leg. You wanna do what you can to eliminate momentum and really focus on driving up through this front leg's heel rather than pushing off your back leg's toe. I'm parched today, people. seeing stars today. Another huge thing that I completely forgot to mention is the bench height or whatever step that you're using. This is a high step up here. So as you can tell where my foot is now, my thigh is just about parallel with the ground. So this, if my foot was here, it'd be too low of a step up. So we wanna make it so that our thigh is about parallel with the ground when we're just staying rested on our elevated surface. The next exercise is the glute focused hyperextension, which it looks like this. I'm sure we've all have seen it before. This is primarily more so a lower back exercise, but if we tweak it a little bit, it will help to shape more focus to the glutes. I'm honestly putting this in because I haven't done any sort of like thrusting motion at all. We didn't do any hip thrusts today or anything like that or cast bridges. The purpose for this is to isolate some glutes and then of course a little bit more hamstring. So I have my feet pointed a little bit out at about a 45 degree angle. And so with this, it's also really important to make sure it's the appropriate height. So it's right in the crease of my hip when I'm coming down. If it's too high up, it's gonna restrict your range of motion. So that's really important. And I'm also using a plate here for added difficulty. Ideally, you wanna keep a slight bend in your knee. I always struggle to do that. But then you're gonna take this plate, hold it out a little bit more in front of you to create more tension on your glutes and then you're going to drive up through your heels and squeeze your glutes and try to bring your upper body up so it's about in line with your lower body and I also like to pause for a millisecond at the top and you really want to focus on pulling up with your glutes rather than flexing your low back to get you up. If you're really struggling with feeling it in your low back, you can also hunch even more, tuck your chin to your chest and round your back, and that will help you really feel it more so in your glutes as well. For our final exercise, we're going to do some lateral work to hit our glute medius and minimus, which is kind of these upper outer portions of our glutes that are kind of muscles up in our hip joint. There's a few ways to hit them, but a good way to do that is with lateral work. So I'm going to do a standing abduction kick, meaning I'm basically just going to be kicking my leg up out to the side. But I've recently discovered a way to like deepen this exercise to feel it even more and in both legs and I've been loving it even more now. So I'm holding the plate to my side. The point is not to be like holding this up with your bicep, it's just to rest it against your leg, but the work should still be coming up from this leg pushing the weight up. So I have a nice slight bend in my non-working leg and a bend in my working leg, and I'm basically just gonna be kicking out to the side and holding the plate right in the middle of my thigh. But as I'm coming back down, I'm going to sink into this working leg's hip. So if I face you, I'm gonna come in like this a little bit as I come down to get kind of a stretch in this glute medius and minimum and then I'm going to kind of extend up 
as I kick my leg out, be able to engage that muscle as well. So it's kind of hitting both sides at once, which I really like. So it's a little bit, it's nothing dramatic, but I'm just sinking into this wor non-working side's hip ever so slightly. And it really adds a whole new dimension to the exercise. Such a sleeper exercise, but it gets you. Happy Tuesday. Today is an upper body day. We're doing a little vlog action here in the gym. It is late. We're doing a night lift. This to me now feels like a late night lift, but like in college, I used to train from eight to nine on like a regular day. And now it's like 6.30 and I'm like, it's literally midnight. First exercise, we're doing a good old lat pull down here. So quick run over for form. We're hitting our lats here. So this is gonna be a big back exercise, which is why we're starting with it while we have the most energy in our lift. The biggest common mistake that I see with this exercise is feeling like you need to overcompensate and come really low and also rounding in your shoulders. So the biggest cue is you really wanna drop your shoulders away from your ears and open up your chest. And I'm bringing really squeezing with my lats, driving down with my elbows, and I'm stopping right at the top of my chest, as you can see here. So I'm not coming all the way down my belly button and I'm not rounding over my shoulders. Keeping my chest nice and open, my shoulders away from my ears and stopping right at the top of my chest. To really make sure that we're hitting the lats, which is our primary focus here. So you guys, I may or may not have forgot my sneakers, so I'm rocking with the slides today. But I have to say, if there's any day to forget my sneakers, look at Delaney with the gloves on. If there's any day to forget my sneakers, it was today, because I don't really need them on upper body day. But anyways, now we're gonna go into a superset. You guys know I love supersets on upper body day. So we're gonna do an incline bench press, and then we're going to go into a concentration curl for the biceps. So we're kind of doing best of both world action. Biggest thing, a lot of people wanna bring their elbows out and come into a T, but that just is going to place a lot of stress on our shoulder joint, which is what we don't want. So instead of flailing our elbows, we're gonna bring them in a little bit at a 45 degree angle from our sides. So we're gonna keep them tucked in, keep those wings in, and we're gonna stay right here. Again, dropping our elbows down, coming until our palms are like parallel with our chest and driving up and squeezing the tops of our chest. This is also gonna hit the front of our shoulders as well. Keeping the core nice and tight. I'm rooting my heels into the ground, having a nice wide stance for some more stability. And we're gonna be here for 12 reps. That'll do it. So this bench is at a 45 degree angle. I should have mentioned that earlier. I like this exercise specifically personally because it just forces me to eliminate momentum. I can't really swing to get the weight up when I'm doing a curl. So it just feels much more concentrated. So I'm essentially same position for the chest press. Feet are nice and wide for a nice sturdy base. And then I'm going to come up into a normal curl. I'm stopping about like three quarters of the way. I'm not coming all the way up and letting the weights plop up into my shoulder because that top quarter of the movement is kind of where you're gonna be losing peak tension and peak contraction. So I'm honing in right there at the peak of that contraction and stopping for a millisecond. I always find this exercise so hard. <sighs> Controlling the raising and the lowering portion. God damn. That was so over. 
time. Next superset, we're going to be hitting both our shoulders and also our triceps. So I'm going in with my good old trusty lateral raises. I love these so much. Nothing quite gets me like a lateral raise. So for these same principle, I'm not crouching my shoulders up and doing this, right? I'm dropping my shoulders away from my ears, keeping my chest nice and open. My shoulders are retracted down, my lats are engaged, and my chest is open. I have a nice slight bend in my arms. I also like to keep a little bit of a staggered stance as well, just to have a little bit more stability going on. And then I'm basically coming up and stopping when my palms are just about parallel with the ground, so I'm not shooting them up towards my ear. I'm stopping with my palms are parallel with my shoulders. And again, always keeping that slight bend in my arm to protect my elbow. And I'm keeping my core nice and tight. And I'm doing sets of 12. Whew. I don't even know if that was 12. I feel yoked in this lighting right now. Okay. <laughs> Then, gotta go get my dumbbell, you know. Okay, so I did move the bench a little bit down. So now it's at like a 30 degree angle, I would say. And this is our exercise to hit our triceps. I am using an easy bar, meaning that it's not straight across. So this is just better and easier to hold. Not as big of a stress on our wrists. I'm saying thank you to Letty for teaching me that. Okay, here we go for the triceps. So I'm starting again. My feet are nice and wide for a nice stable base. And I'm essentially just going to be bringing this bar towards like the back of my head, if you will. But I'm trying to keep my tri my, excuse me my elbows and upper arm completely stationary so the only movement here is when my palms are coming up towards the sky and my forearms are coming up so you want to try to keep your elbows as stationary as possible to really isolate the triceps and we're here for a set of 15. I don't even know what I'm on <laughs> Elfine. So this is an exercise I definitely would normally do like as my first, second, or third exercise, but I honestly just forgot about it. So we're gonna do it now at the end of the workout, but we're going to be doing a single arm dumbbell row. If you can try to get like, I guess you can start here, but when I'm actually doing my set, can you try to like get up and like behind me up there? Or is that gonna be hard? I'm gonna be like this. So for this exercise, we're gonna have one knee on the bench as well as one hand. Then we're gonna be holding the weight with our opposite hand or essentially our working side. I keep a nice wide stance with this supporting leg as well. I also personally like to lean back a little bit on this knee that's on the bench. It just really gives me a stable, just this whole setup gives me a more stable and more athletic base here. So I'm gonna take my weight. I'm keeping my elbow nice and close to my side. So I'm not coming out like this. I'm keeping it right nice and close to my side and I'm trying to hit my hip with my elbow. Again, dropping my shoulders away from my ears and I'm focusing on squeezing my lat, which is right here, to pull this dumbbell up towards the crease of my hip. important cue when I'm pulling the weight up I'm not like doing this and twisting I'm keeping my shoulders nice and square to the floor and the only movement here is just to bring this weight up I'm not trying to open up my shoulders I want to keep that nice and square to the ground all right I think that was it the end of day two workout number two I'll see you guys tomorrow Happy Wednesday, you guys. So honestly, what I do on Wednesdays kind of changes. Like some days I'll hit upper body today, some day, like it just kind of flip flops. But traditionally, ideally, like when it comes to my split, today is technically the day that's dedicated to like some steady state cardio. So I just like to do 12, 330 on the treadmill. It just keeps it easy and it still like gets my heart rate up. And I just feel like it's the perfect kind of intensity for me. So if you've never heard of 12, 330, it essentially just means an incline of 12, a speed of three and for 30 minutes. And I'll either just like, kind of do some work on my phone, answer emails, edit, 
read like really anything call a loved one so it's really nothing crazy it's definitely like low impact you know low intensity movement for the day but i just like it to get me moving especially more so in the winter months when i'm just inside more and i'm pretty sedentary Happy Thursday, you guys. Today we are hitting legs, the second leg day of the week. I have to show you guys my fit, which you guys are obviously gonna see it anyway. I have these like really hot pink shorts and then this blue top, which I never wear these tops anymore. I know it's like kind of obnoxious and a ton of color, but I love wearing color in the gym. Exercise numero uno for today's leg day is going to be a very traditional heavy hip thrust. So the goal here is to go decently heavy, push yourself on weight, and I'm sticking anywhere between like 10 to 12 reps. So for going over form, I personally like to use a decline bench. It's just easier for me because I don't have to like shimmy my way up onto the bench. You're kind of just there. If you put your legs out straight where your feet should be, you should put your heel about where the crease of your knee would be is a pretty good general rule of thumb. Then you can adjust your feet from there once you get up. But this is going to be a pretty good standard starting foot position. My feet are shoulder width apart. Now with this decline bench, I'm able just to press up and I'm already in position. With the hip thrust, we're always going to want to be driving up through our heels. And as you can see with this foot position, Position. My knee is stacked over my ankle and my shin is nice and vertical. This is going to help it more be more glute bias as opposed to quad or hamstring focus. I'm keeping my chin always tucked to my chest. I'm not letting my head drop back. This is going to help create something called a posterior pelvic tilt or essentially curling your hips kind of under tucking your pelvis, which also helps with glute activation and engagement. And we're always trying to scoop up with our hips. And the most important thing is you wanna be locking your hips up as high as you can. So I'm not overextending and putting a lot of stress on my low back, but I am reaching max hip extension to where I'm hitting a flat tabletop position. This is where there's the most tension and torque on the glute. So it's really important to hit this. Is this back sheep voice? <laughs> oh, he's getting groovy. All right, dogs, let's get it. <sighs> Bit of pulses at the top of each rep that just helps me really like finish that rep and finish that contraction. I'm winning. Snake eyes for y'all, shoulders on ice for y'all. Frozen. 8-6 all the hate, I won't get a ball today. Got lost in the ball in days. I'm flipping the balls, I'm flipping the, flipping the, flipping the. All record, off record, I still count wins when they got it. On record, off record, I let them take advantage. I was wildin'. On record, off record deals. Tell them talk to Colin for the quote. On record, off record, I still want the act, not the ghost. Running through it with the young and blooming said that less impressions are coming to it. I also feel like my legs have gotten bigger. Don't you think? Anyway, okay, exercise number two is going to be a Smith Machine deficit reverse lunge. I am using a little teeny block. That's what's making the deficit. This is definitely optional. This is just to help give us like a little bit more range of motion, but just keep in mind there is, it's kind of redundant to use a step if you're not actually like going past the range of motion of the step, if that makes sense. So if you're coming down to do a lunge and you're stopping here, there's really no need for you to be using the elevated surface. Here we go, going over form. I'm gonna do this very quickly just because it's very similar to the step ups we did on day one. I'm gonna position my foot on the block so that when I come down into this lunge, again, knee stacked over the ankle. As you can see, there's a lot of patterns going on here and I'm sinking back and down into the lunge, coming down as deep as I can and then driving up through this front leg's heel. We're making sure we're not pushing off this back leg's toe and we're trying to control the lowering portion and the raising portion. Another thing quickly to keep in mind, when doing this on the Smith machine, if yours is also at an angle like mine is, it's kind of tilted back. I like to keep my foot up a little bit forward so that I'm a little bit out of an angle that's more in alignment with the Smith machine instead of standing straight up and down.
everyone say thank you to Letty for filming. Bye, Letty. <laughs> You gotta go to work. Next exercise is going to be a dumbbell RDL, which we already went over form because earlier this week we did the barbell RDL, so everything is exactly the same, but I am gonna run over form really quickly just for a little reminder in case anyone needs it. Feet are just about shoulder width apart. I'm pushing my hips backwards, and that's allowing my torso to fold over. I'm keeping my spine nice and neutral. I'm not curving or arching my back. I'm keeping a slight bend in my leg to protect my knee, and I'm keeping those dumbbells super close to my legs throughout the whole entire duration of the movement and as always we're driving up through our what our heels to really target the glutes So juiced up. I'm listening to Kryptonite by Three Doors Down, major throwback, but I love that song. I used to grow up like hearing my dad listening to it when he was working out and now it just hits so hard. Now we're gonna move into some more isolation work. So we're going to do the lying hamstring curl to hit, what do you know, our hamstrings. Lucky for you, I don't have too many form pointers for this one. It's pretty self-explanatory, but main thing is that I try not to have my hips like really raise off off the pad. I'm trying to like dig my hips in as I'm curling my legs because it just helps to isolate the hamstrings more. Five, two, three. Full range of motion as always. This is going to be our final exercise. It's just for the glute medius and minimus. It's gonna be another lateral kick kind of movement. So I am on an incline bench here. I just prefer the range of motion, to be honest. You don't necessarily need it to be on an incline, but I like it because it just kind of gives you a bigger range of motion as well at the bottom of the movement. I should honestly call this more of like a mermaid kick, but essentially you're gonna be on your side. I have my non-working leg kind of bent just for more stability. And we're literally just kicking this working leg up and we're controlling also the lowering portion of the movement and I'm just resting this plate like right above my knee on the side of my thigh. All right, you guys, it's going to be it for the workout today. I really enjoyed it. It was like 10 out of 10. I felt really good. I felt really strong. I liked the exercises. I was vibing with it. Something I've been trying to add in into my leg days, especially when it's a really high intense leg day or like when I really was maxing out my weight like I did this morning. This morning or early in the workout with my hip dress, I like to do some sort of like cool down stretch. This helps to like relax and regulate my nervous system again, like get a hold of my breathing. And also I just have been liking it for kind of an opportunity to offer gratitude towards my body for showing up today kind of like how you end in shavasana for yoga it's kind of like that but like at the end of my lifting sessions it just has been a good way for me to like remember to be doing this all out of love and self-love and doing this to better my body and thank my body for all it's doing for me All right, and welcome to Friday. So, you know, Letty, I was going to get ready to go do my normal training, my functional full body circuit, but then Letty challenged me to a racquetball match. So that's what we did. We played like one and a half games because he won the first one and I'm kind of competitive. And so even though he normally beats me, but I still <laughs> was like, let's play again. So we played like another mini game till five. I did win that one, but it doesn't really count as a full game. But anyway, so we did that for probably like 20 or so minutes. Okay, so now getting into the actual workout. So I did all of these exercises in a circuit format. And so I performed each workout for 40 seconds, followed by a 20 second rest. And then I would go into the next exercise. And I repeated all of this for a total of three times. And we have eight exercises here. So I started off with a squat, well, excuse me, a squat to press, essentially going into a normal squat. My feet are about shoulder width apart, pushing those hips back to squat down. And then I'm exploding up through my heels and driving those dumbbells up towards the sky. And I have a neutral grip. So my palms are facing in towards one another. Okay, now don't let me fool y'all, but all of a sudden, really, as in like a week ago, I realized I could do pistol squats. So I've been adding in these just to like keep getting stronger on these and getting more comfortable. So I did five 
wrist reps of five on each leg. If you cannot do this yet, you can totally do like a modification would be to go onto a box instead of going all the way down, like doing a one legged squat with having a box to catch you. That's a great kind of regression if you're needing it. From there, I went into a push up to a row. So I just did a normal conventional push up followed by a row on each side. So we're getting our chest and our arms in here, but also our back with that row. So for the push up, I'm keeping my elbows kind of tighter in towards my side. So they're about a 45 degree angle from me and keeping that core nice and tight. I'm not letting my butt come up or sag down. Also, as you can see, I'm keeping a really wide stance in my feet. This is to help me stay more stable when I am rowing that dumbbell to kind of the crease of my hip. We don't want to be rocking too much on side to side. This is a great one for core stability. So you want to try to keep your hips really square during that row process. Then to get our heart rate back up and kind of do a more higher speed movement, we are doing some toe taps. I'm just using a weighted medicine ball, so I won't really move around, but you could also kind of use a little step up or any little elevated surface. I'm trying to not look at the ball. So this is a great one as well for footwork. That's kind of our main intention here. So I'm trying to keep my eyes up, but I'm also am always trying to make constant contact with my toes, with the ball. And also if you kind of want to increase the difficulty on this, you can move. As you can see, I am, I'm going back and forth, kind of switching up my directions when I'm going back and forth. This is just, again, helping to get that footwork, that speed, and also just awareness of knowing where your feet are. Then I don't know why I find these so challenging, you guys. So these are like plank bird dogs. I just started adding these in. Honestly, I did them for the first time like last week, I believe. I find these so hard. I think the balance component, but also the like mobility aspect in the shoulders. Like, I don't know. It is a good one though. So basically we're just trying to lift our opposite leg to opposite arm. Again, similar to that push up to row. We don't want to be kind of wobbling back and forth. So we want to keep our core really nice and tight. A big component of this is stability. That's a really big thing that we're working here. So you want to suck that belly button to your spine and you don't want to be rocking too much. And you want to try to bring your arm up to your ear and also kick your leg up as much as possible while also minimizing any flexion in the spine as well. Then we went into another big full body movement. I love this. So this is a reverse lunge to a step up to an overhead press with the knee drive. So there's a lot going on. There's a lot of components, but I'm just doing a reverse lunge. Then I'm taking that same leg to do a step up and then I'm driving that opposite leg up to do a knee drive, bringing that belly button to my spine. And I'm also simultaneously pressing the weights up. This really gets your balance going since there's a lot of unilateral work as well as the knee drive with lifting your hands up above your head. So it's really important to keep that core really tight for the movement. That's what I find to be working most rather than my legs. It's mostly hitting my core and my arms. Then I always like to finish with a little ab burner. So we have two ab exercises back to back. This is a little, I honestly forget what these are called. I'm going to put it on the screen because I honestly do not remember what these are called. Called. but I wanted to do some kind of like side ab work here. So I'm just in a low side plank and then I'm bringing my arm starting in an upright position and then I'm kind of feeding it through underneath my waistline and then rotating and then coming back up. This is great to hit a little bit more of the obliques. And I, again, as always, I'm keeping that belly button really tight to my spine. And it's also important to not let your hips sag. I'm really trying to stay up in a very straight line. Then I finished off with some good old plate handoffs. This is such an iconic exercise for me. I love this one for some reason. Again, keeping that core really nice and tight and we're essentially just handing off a plate. So we're going to bring that and we're going to rest it on my shins, extend my legs outward. As you can tell, I'm not letting my heels touch the ground. If you need a regression though, that's a great thing to do just to kind of rest your feet in the interim. Otherwise, keep your feet above the ground and then you're going to be scrunching your knees back in, pulling up with your abs to do so, grabbing that plate with your hands, lifting it up overhead. So for Saturday, like I said, we did go skiing. It really was only for like two or three hours. It wasn't super long, but we did do a hike while we were out there, which if you're kind of unfamiliar with what that means, you're like, how are you hiking if you're skiing? Essentially, it just means you're taking off your skis and you're hiking up past kind of where the chairlifts go or just in an area where chairlifts don't reach, not necessarily higher up, but just like in a different direction. And you're pretty much just climbing up the side of the mountain with your skis over your shoulder. So the hike we did was about like 20 minutes, 20 to 25 minutes, and then you're just able to ski down kind of on the back side of it so that was more so my activity for the day all right i'm just gonna stop at the uh oh great oh, yeah. that's the best spot because you can kind of ride this okay yeah no all thanks right. well you know i'm going over the rock when in rome do it <gasps> that is so smooth I go away 
I so want to watch that footage back. Oh, do you have it on video? Yeah, because I felt like we're on the canoe thing. Like, like, I'm like coming up on your lap. Yeah, I'm like, I tuck in and she's barreling. <laughs> well, I just make myself so crack fast. up. Because That is it for this video, you guys. I really hope you enjoyed it and had some really good takeaways from it. If you do enjoy videos like this, which I suspect you do, if especially if you made it to this point all in one go, first of all, thank you for being here and watching this far through. But if you do enjoy these types of videos, I do have a whole playlist on my page of more week of workouts. I also have more in-depth kind of instructional workouts all on my page, mostly also embedded in vlogs and things like that. If you did enjoy this video and you felt like you got some value out of it, I'd really appreciate it if you could drop a thumbs up because it is a way to support this channel in a way that's completely free to you and just help this video reach more people and help them if you want to see more videos from me you can of course you're always welcome to subscribe i'm sending you guys so much love and hopefully i'll see you in my next video peace out